Due to mature subject matter, viewer discretion is advised. Three things will break them. Boot camp, isolation, or other inmates. If I got to, I'll close the door and lock myself in a cell with you. Here, the strong survive, the weak perish, <laughs> and only the toughest guys win. Welcome to the prison known as Gladiator Camp. p.m. Fort Dodge Correctional Facility in Northern Iowa. Right there, go uh, on the wall to the left. A busload of new inmates pulls in. 19-year-old Thomas Boggs enters prison for the first time. He faces a 15-year sentence for attacking a teenager with a knife. Now he's in a world where he's the one at risk. Officials built Fort Dodge, a medium security prison, for inmates like Boggs, men 18 to 25 years old. The state wanted to reform them early to prevent them from becoming career criminals but packing hundreds of volatile young men in one place had an unintended result. This prison's become a proving ground with inmates fighting so frequently, they call Fort Dodge Gladiator Camp. Fort Dodge has zero tolerance for fighting. As punishment, COs take by for desegregation. And I just remember sitting in the chair, getting my hand cuffed. Thinking, damn, I was only here two minutes. <laughs> That's like a record or something. But he doesn't regret the fight. In this young men's prison, image means everything, and Byford has shown his strength. Boggs appears weak, and without Byford, he's on his own. I don't know. If he keeps it to himself, he's all right, but otherwise, he's gonna have a hard time. People don't like that. Everybody's out to prove themselves, so they're like, oh, that's a good target to deal with. Back in the unit, more inmates gang up on Boggs. <laughs> Seasoned inmates watch him, including 25-year-old Jerome Anderson. He was locked up six years ago for drug possession and is one of the unit's toughest veterans. Just hold on to it. In his cell, Bog's situation goes from bad to worse. His new cellmate is Jerome Anderson. Yeah, that's an um, honor unit. Nervously, Boggs attempts to fit in. He's read the prison rules and regulations. Well, orientation's between level one and two, so you either move up to two or one. Oh no, I just know what the schedule says. Where is the schedule? I know all these books. I don't know now. I don't even know what to tell you. But the one thing Boggs needs to know most isn't in the rule book. Anderson has a short temper and little patience for first-timers. In a neighboring cell block, 80 young inmates do their time in a militaristic program called Rivers, intended to prevent them from becoming hardened criminals. One, two, three, one. Structured as a boot camp, Rivers aims to break young inmates' bad behavior. Ready, begin. Down. Down. They follow a strict daily schedule of grueling physical training, How many of you think intensive treatment classes, and manual labor. 
If an inmate graduates from the five-month program, he's immediately released. If he fails, he serves his full sentence, sometimes up to 10 years. Quit hitting the table, please. But I got 80 guys I gotta look after too, man. Mike Swanson helps run the Rivers unit. He and a team of 14 COs attempt to keep the inmates in line. You're probably one of the worst ones here right now. Serious. Out of 80 guys, yes. It is tough because you want to help them, but it all depends if they want to get helped. Despite their crisp uniforms, these inmates rebel at every opportunity. Selfishness and self-centeredness is the biggest problem that we have with these guys. Trying to deal with it and trying to fix it at this age is tough because they continue the same behaviors. One inmate in particular has a history of being a troublemaker. 22-year-old Anthony Klein. When I saw Offender Klein come into the program, just his kind of cocky nature that he has, the way he carries himself, the way that he thinks he's, he's all that, I kind of knew that there was going to be issues with him. Never thought I'd end up here. The day I came, I was like, man, I'm here. Klein, like many Rivers inmates, landed in prison because of drug addiction. I was doing marijuana, started doing meth, you know, ecstasy, drinking, you know, violating my probation there, you know, got away with it. The drugs is, I mean, it's no excuse, but that's what really got me on the road to keep coming here, you know. After he beat someone up, a judge sentenced him to a year in prison. But because of his youth, the judge also gave Klein a way out. The Rivers program. Klein, yep. Lloyd. If I complete the Rivers, I only got to do four months, 18 days, which is really, a, that's a good chance for me. The odds are against him. Two of his brothers are also doing time. Their own father wasn't around for them. Klein vowed not to make the same mistake with his own son. My kid's four years old. He's the most important thing to me in my life. You know, I mean, I know I really messed up coming here, not being there for him. My dad wasn't there when I was young, but I, I learned my lesson from him. I know I got to be there for my kids. So when I get out, give me a job, stick there with my kids so he can have me, have, have a dad, have a mom, so he ain't going to wind up like me. But with four weeks to go, Klein is just two disciplinary reports away from being kicked out of the program. And the river COs are sticklers for the rules. Six times a day, they physically account for each river's inmate. It's critical that the inmates be awake and in full uniform. 50 push-ups apiece after dinner. But CO Jeffrey Cook catches Klein and his cellmate asleep. My job is not to wake you up. Huh? It's not my job to wake you up. Try to get five again, man. It's your job to be up. <clears throat> you guys know butter. Come on. Why it you guys? What happened? Fell asleep, man. Fell asleep. Act like it's a crime to fall asleep. I didn't say it was a crime, but it's against the rules, Mr. Klein, and you know butter. I guess the rules sleep do that. We sleep during count every day. The situation quickly escalates. It would be virtually impossible for you to sleep through every count. You since call me a liar. To be... no, I'm not going to well, I sleep through count every day. Mr. Uh, Klein, I'm going to uh, warn you on that. Okay. All right. yep. Klein backs down. But if he messes up again, the COs will come down hard. One more mistake could cost him the next year of his life. At Fort Dodge Prison, the yard is the harshest proving ground. Inmates group together based on race and gang affiliations. The only way a new inmate can stay safe is within a group. 
But to earn acceptance, he must show physical strength. Thomas Boggs has one chance to impress the groups. But all he does is draw unwanted attention. When other young inmates face heckling, they fight back. They're desperate to impress the groups and prove they're tough. But Boggs doesn't see the point. That is senseless. <laughs> All fighting does in here is make your time worse, but it's not like I'm not gonna defend myself, but I, if I'm given a choice, I'd rather not. 22-year-old Cameron Dodd understands the power of fighting. He worked his way up the prison hierarchy. It's a lot different here than it is in the world. You got to handle your situation, it's a lot different. Dodd is a loyal crip, serving 10 years for attempting to recruit gang members. Other inmates respect Dodd because he fights like a prison veteran behind closed doors. I'm not gonna hit you out here in the yard or in front of, in front of the desk or in front of any CEOs, you know what I'm saying? I wait till, if this is going down, if I feel I'm through that threshold, I'm waiting until you go to lock down or not, and I'm finna go into your cell. And if I got to, I'll close the door and lock myself in the cell with you. Dodd's tough reputation earned him a powerful position. He helps run the Crips' lucrative black market, called The Hustle. And the youngest inmates are his best customers. New people who come in are the biggest profit on the camp because they don't have their money here yet. There's all different reasons why. It's a big thing with the kids who come in. They always want something. The two things they want most are tobacco and coffee. Anything for a buzz. I'm trying to take care of any, any situation. And Dodd is a master at providing the goods. It's cool. I got you. Yeah, I got you. Don't worry about it. But in this young man's prison, someone else always wants to be on top. And even Dodd's carefully laid plans may not keep him safe. Anthony Klein could walk out of this tough prison in three weeks. But one more mistake could keep him here for a full year. He resents Rivers' strict regimen more each day and refuses to follow one important rule, no smoking. Do I smoke? <laughs> Yeah, I smoke. It's, uh, we're not supposed to here. Got a couple reports for it, but I ain't gonna lie. So, yeah, I smoke. It's hard to get away with it. It's hard to quit, though. I mean, it's really hard to quit. It's probably one of the biggest things that helps me through this, smoking. <laughs> yeah. Rivers forbids tobacco and coffee to help recovering drug addicts like Klein. The goal? Teach self-control and curb addiction of any kind but the inmates risk everything for a buzz. Inmates constantly get kicked out for smoking. But Klein's friends have a fresh stash of tobacco, and he bends to the peer pressure. Roll it up, brother. Switch that. They don't have cigarette paper, so they roll the tobacco using mailing envelopes. You want to smoke? You got foil? You a smoke lord? For a lighter, they heat foil with a battery. Then ignite a tulip, a rolled up piece of toilet paper. That's how we make a tulip flower. There you go. <laughs> Where's he at? I don't know. Now y'all got Scary guy. They smoke into air vents to mask the smell. I, I'm a little nervous too, man. 
Just get the f***ing door. Get the s*** out of here. Don't do that, dude. They rush through the cigarette. flush the evidence. Again, but Swanson busts and mates for smoking all the time. And his shift just started. Here he comes, right? Ooh, you're Mr. Hit. Bryant, do you know what the term OPA stands for? Excuse me, Mr. Bryant. Mr. Bryant. In Fort Dodge prison, the average age in the Rivers unit is 21. No more. I don't want to see you outside. I'm having a hard enough time doing this without you jumping around on me. I told you four. Bring your energy level down. You're getting wound up. The prison calls these men adults. But every day, the COs battle adolescent behavior. That's when you get in trouble. Please, step back in. Seventeen. With the, the young crowd that we have, very sneaky, very uh, manipulative, we'll try to get away with stuff. Personally, I hate guys getting over on me, man. I can't stand it. Does it happen? Absolutely. Swanson suspects someone was smoking. He and another CO narrow it down to two cells. That's about it for this one. This cell is clean. But in the next cell, the officer hits pay dirt. You can see from sweeping the floor in here, there's tobacco. He discovers tobacco and a battery. And there it is. You can see the burn marks from where he's been using this with little foil strips from some sort of wrapper to, to light his cigarette and whoever else's cigarette in here. So. The cell belongs to Anthony Klein. It's the last straw. Swanson will send him before the Rivers Review Board. Next week, they may kick him out of the program for good. But first, Klein must tell the people he loves most he's messed up again. His entire family is here to visit. I love you. I love you too. Look at your family. I know, I like it. How you been? Hey, how you been? I've been high. Miss you. I like that shirt. You did? What'd you do? Yeah, my room got searched again. You smoking? Yeah, they said we were smoking, but they found a pouch under the bed that nobody's in, so they said they're giving us all reports. What they tell you? Quit. I'm gonna quit now. I'm done, for real. <laughs> no? Klein tries to focus on his son. Did you get your positive card? Yeah, yes, I got a letter from you. Give me kids. Thank you. He gets to see him only a few hours a month. Oh, the movies you watch. He wants to fight. We can't fight in here. We'll get in trouble. Yes, we will. Yeah, you see all those cameras up there on the walls? They watch your dad. Right here. We can't fight in here. That little black hole. There's a camera in there that watches everybody in here. Uh, especially on the building supply. Tell them about the big turtle at Olsen Park. But the incident hangs over him. I don't know, they're gonna, I'm gonna appeal it. So it probably won't go through by the time I'm out. But I got two reports already coming. Come here, give me a kiss and hug. Give me a kiss, give me a hug. Hug me big, I love you. You love me? Okay, bye bye. God daddy will be here next week. Klein promises his family he won't make another mistake. Love you. Love you. Now, he must convince the review board that he means it. Not all inmates have the luxury of long family visits. This is segregation, what inmates call the hole. Here, 100 inmates live in isolation 22 hours a day. Is it Boggs? And Thomas Boggs just arrived. He asked to come here for protective custody. 
During a routine strip search, a CO discovered bruising on Boggs' arm and leg. When questioned, he came up with an unconvincing story about a game he was playing with other inmates. I was playing a martial arts game called Hit for Hit, and it's a self-control thing, and they don't have self-control. <laughs> um, but you're not supposed to leave marks, but they did, and I didn't think anything of it until after it happened, and then I was like, ah, oh, crap. So I take my punishment as it's needed, and it's all I can do. If I made the mistake of playing the game, I gotta live with it. One of the men suspected of hitting Boggs is also in the hole. It's his former cellmate, Jerome Anderson. He doesn't back up Bug's story. So he was saying they're playing some tit for tat game or something? I mean, what, what's that whole thing about? He said he was playing tit for tat. Uh, I don't know. Anderson says he can't explain the bruising. As far as I know, he probably gave them to him himself. He got some issues. <laughs> he ain't, uh, Type I, I like to be around me. He, he's funny. Bugs made his situation even worse by asking for protective custody or PC. Once someone checks in the PC, you know what's their rep on the yard? Uh, he's a coward. He ain't, he ain't no good. He, he's on his own. Boggs hoped segregation would keep him safe, but the hole is miserable. The few times Boggs leaves his cell, other inmates threaten him. Yeah, PC! Yeah, PC! I'm gonna get you, Boggs! I'm gonna get you, Boggs! Childish. Woo! The only time segregation inmates get to go outside is at night for one hour of recreation. They're locked in 19 by three foot cages. Boggs' old friend, Ben Byford, has been in the hole for three weeks, and Boggs is eager to talk to him. Is that Boggs? Yeah. What up, Thomas Boggs? Not much, Ben. Hey, hey, is this the first time you came up? As they talk, Byford reveals the hole is pushing him over the edge. I don't know, man. I want, I want commissary and I want to be able to look out my window and Man, I'm way high for all this walking. I just keep getting faster and faster. Man, did they increase your meds? No, they took my meds away, dude. They, they took me off Adderall and Trazodone and put me on Depakote, Seroquel, and something else. Dude, I've been sweating out of nowhere and hot or cold sweats and I've been dreaming some crazy ass. As soon as he's back in the yard, he'll get back in the game. I'm not going to change none of my behavior, you know what I'm saying? Just like I haven't for this past 15 months that I've been here, you know what I mean? Boggs, time to see the review committee. Thomas Boggs isn't handling the hole as well as Dodd. After three weeks, he says the isolation brings out his violent tendencies. The violence stems from a need to get back at the world, I guess. Um, it's kind of like you corner an animal, it's going to get pissed off and it's going to start lashing out at everything. He wants to return to general population, or GP. And despite being attacked, he's optimistic the prison will let him. Mr. Boggs, come on in, have a seat. Good morning. Okay, we're the classification committee. How are things going? Yeah. Could be better, could be worse. Trying to figure out what to do with you. What are your thoughts on going back out there to GP status? I don't think there'd be any problems as long as I'm not with the in the room with the same people. Really? Yeah. The committee is stunned at how out of touch he is with reality. So now you're not concerned about it being a problem if you go back? No. Well, what do you think the guys that were on the unit, if you were to go to their room, how they're gonna feel? I have no idea. So you're wanting to go back? Well, if there's a way I could do all of the DD and vocational and welding and get one of the boat job or the telemarketing job and be in PC, I'd like to do that, but... That's not gonna happen. That, that's not an option. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> the 
Back in isolation, Boggs predicts he'll return to GP soon. I'll probably be taking education courses and I'll probably be in GP. I'll be somewhere out in the yard, lost somewhere, wandering. I look forward to getting my education and getting a job and anything past the time quicker. Anthony Klein wants to avoid GP. But if he breaks a single river's rule, that's exactly where he'll end up. Klein reports to work to sand and repaint desks. A veteran inmate named Phineas Atwood shows him the ropes. You want to start out with 60 if you can. Like Klein, Atwood entered prison as a young man. He's doing time for murder. So, uh, what are you doing? <laughs> Klein has never met him. Got a parole violation for not going to my class. I got an assault. No, no, I like that. Was on an assault charge. So they sent me here for violating to the violators for him. What about yourself? Life sentence. Life sentence? Seriously. I'm doing a life sentence and I've been locked up for 25 years. I got a kid that's probably older than me. Probably, huh? You know this is your last chance. Yeah. You better take advantage of it. Because if you don't, this is going to be your life. And I don't think you want it to be your life. No, I don't. Because I don't. But I have no choice. I like it. You can do it. Thank you. Bye, dude. Don't count on In his cell, Klein realizes he has a choice to make. He talks it over with his cellmate, who's supposed to graduate the same day as Klein. It's weird, Klein, the closer I get to getting out of here, you know, like, I don't know, it's like the more I miss my kids, you know? And I, I mean, I've missed him the whole time I've been here, but it's like, I haven't seen him since Christmas, man. What? I know what you mean, and I cannot wait to see my son. It's gonna be great. Yeah, I miss everything. I miss my son walking, talking for the first time, and it sucks, but. Kind of makes you wake up in here, though. Kind of nothing, it does. Especially I'm missing the children part. And your family. Yeah. I mean, I've always missed my family, always loved my family, but I've really, really realized how much I really love my family. Yeah. You ain't a real man if you don't spend time with your family. Yeah, that's yeah. my opinion. And that's something I lacked on, you know? It's something I really had to work on. The realization won't be enough to get him out of prison. Klein must convince the review board and Swanson. He's changed for good. <laughs> Thomas Boggs starts his 23rd night in the hole, a place he hates. For his own safety, this is where he'll stay. Prison officials decided, for now, he cannot return to general population. He was worried that the whole unit would be against me. Everything spreads. You just get a problem with one person, you're gonna have a problem with 10 people. Have a problem with 10 people, you're gonna have a problem with 100 people. Boggs hangs on to the unrealistic hope that the inmates will eventually accept him. And if nothing blows over while I'm in PC, like why I'm in PC gets forgotten and blows over in the yard and nobody makes a big deal out of it, I might check out. But his former cellmate, Jerome Anderson, won't let them forget. The prison released him from the hole because they couldn't prove he attacked Boggs. COs move Boggs to long-term segregation, where he could spend the next decade of his life. He won't escape the label of protective custody. As long as he's at Fort Dodge, he'll be a marked man. Anthony Klein could walk away from Fort Dodge in a matter of days if the Rivers Review Board lets him. He's been on his best behavior. 
But the COs just announced cell inspections and caught Klein completely off guard. No time to be roaming around. Please wait till I get there. Quicker we do this, quicker you're done. Oh, to avoid a report, Klein's cell must be in perfect order and free of contraband. Oh, cover that. Cover that. Just cover it. Here he comes, right? Oh, you're hit. Who's Paul? Straighten it up, please. Cards? Yes. No. Excuse me. This is yours. You need to straighten your top and your bottom. I have no idea what you got going on down there. Tell needs to come down. Bottom could use just a little bit more tightening. That's good. Klein has everything in order. Not bad, Mr. Klein, at all. Thank you very much. You might be careful. You're going over the limit on razor, so. I believe so. Thank you, gentlemen. Now Klein must convince the review board he deserves to graduate. I think you do. When I came here the first time, like I said, I was scared. I didn't want that extension of the program. So, I mean, I, like I said, I quit. I quit everything. I quit putting my feet on the chair. Started going correctly thinking. I mean, so I can, I can learn them again, all my, all my errors again. How's it set with the people that you run around with here on the unit? I just don't, I don't even let them bother me. It's not about them. I mean, it's the program's about me, so. The biggest breakthrough is with disciplinary reports. For the first time in months, Swanson hasn't given him a single one. Also, you know, too, we look through your file and so forth. It doesn't look like you've received any minor reports since the last time we met. That's correct? Okay. No majors, of course. Okay. Good job. Okay, Mr. Klein. Keep, Keep it up. I will. We'll see you in a couple weeks. Unless you graduate before that. Yeah. Right. I hope so. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you. But Klein doesn't see the board again. The next week, he graduates. Okay, I'd like to welcome you all to graduation today for Platoon 82. And most of these guys started on March 12th and made it all the way to here. So they've done a good job. Um, please just come up here and get your certificate, um, as I call your name. Anthony Klein. When I heard my name, when they called my name, it was great, actually. I mean, I smiled. <laughs> yeah. All right, dog. When I first came in here, I thought, that's how I was going to play it, you know, I'll just get through this. Let's just do what I got to do, play the system. But that paper, like I said, when I got that paper, but I actually did something that I put my mind to that I could do, that I learned something out of, you know, so, yeah, it actually did mean something. Now he's free to go. I feel I got a good chance, especially if I stick to it, keep my head out of the drugs, uh, get a job, you know, really think of my son. I'll be all right. I think the percentage would skip me by this time. His true test lies outside the prison walls. Is he a bad guy? No, he's not a bad guy, man. Um, but he needs to learn a new way of living. Do I hope he makes it? Sure I do. Do I want him to, to make a change and be better in life? Absolutely. But uh, that's on him, you know, that's not on me. Forty percent of 18 to 25-year-olds reoffend and end up back in prison. In a cycle that can turn young men into hardened inmates. For those who do come back, the veterans and the hustlers, the whole and the hierarchy, will be waiting for them in Iowa's Fort Dodge Prison for Young Men. <laughs>